Hello, I'm Kathleen, and I want to welcome you to Clayton Valley Presbyterian Church to Godly Play, a Montessori-based program for spiritual formation for children ages three and up, including those of us who are young at heart. In Godly Play, we welcome each person at the door as we come from the sanctuary. We've usually spent a little time with Pastor Barbara before we come over to the room with the teachers. But we meet each person at the door and call them to the circle of the, for the story one by one before so we are called by name. We are all called by name. When we assemble at the circle, no matter who's telling the story that morning, we greet each other in the same way. The Lord be with you. And then, we need to look at the circle of the church year, our calendar. I wish I could invite one of you to go to the calendar with me. Usually we take turns moving our arrow forward in this great circle of the church year where every ending is a beginning and every beginning is an ending. We're coming to the end of the great season that's called the ordinary time. It's not a very fancy name, is it? The green and growing Sundays. They're winding down. It won't be long before we begin Advent. Once we know where we are in the circle of the church year, it's time to come to the circle and really be ready for the story. We get ready at the door, of course, to enter the sacred space, but once we're at the circle, it's time to make our bodies still and our hands still and our hearts and our minds still and open so we can hear what's in the story just for us that day. Every tray and box, every basket in this room is a story. And it's important that we watch where the storyteller goes to take that story down, because once you've heard a story in this room, when you're here during the work time, you can take any story you know and work with it. So you want to be able to find it and, of course, return it to its proper place for the next time. Parables in the corner, the stories of how we worship our liturgy behind me, and lining the walls, the great sacred stories of the Hebrew and Greek scriptures. So watch. Last time, we told this story, the story of the 10 best ways to live. And the star of that show Moses. The stories on the top shelves, like the 10 best ways to live, are all about how God comes close to the people of God. The stories that are on the second row and the third row about how God comes close to a person. It's kind of the color of the desert, isn't it? You might remember that the people of God were living in Egypt. Many years had passed, and there was a new pharaoh, a new king in Egypt, and he had forgotten all that Joseph had done. The people of God were slaves. They were trapped and could not go back. Many strange things happened in Egypt, terrible things. And still, the people could not leave.
the Pharaoh looked around and saw that there were so many of the people of God that he became afraid. He was afraid they would take his kingdom from him. And so he ordered the baby boys to be killed. One mother took her baby and wrapped him in swaddling and laid him in a basket. She took him down to the great river Nile. hidden in the bulrushes that grew along the river. When other women came down to the river, they heard a sound, and it was the daughter of Pharaoh who went through the bulrushes and found the basket with the baby boy. She pulled him out. She named him Moses, which means to draw out in their language. And she took him and raised him at the palace. Moses grew. He looked around. He saw the things that were going on that weren't right. And one day, he saw an Egyptian beating one of the people of God. And he became so angry, he did something terrible. And then, after he had killed that Egyptian, he, he knew it was terrible and that he would be killed. And he fled. He ran away into the desert. Moses went to live with the family of Jethro. And he learned how to be a shepherd, caring for Jethro's great herds of sheep. He even married one of Jethro's daughters, Zipporah. One day as he was tending those sheep, Moses looked up at Mount Horeb, and he was drawn to it. He saw something burning. He climbed the mountain and found a bush that was on fire. But it wasn't burning up. It just kept burning. And through that burning bush, Moses came close to God. God spoke to Moses through that burning bush. God told Moses that he must go back to Egypt for the people must be set free. Moses said, who am I to do this? Can't you send someone else? And God said, I will go with you. Moses says, but what shall I say? What shall I do? And God answered Moses and said, your brother Aaron will go with you, and I will be with you. And so Moses went. He went to the Pharaoh many times. You might remember that part of the story. And each time he asked for the people to be set free, the Pharaoh said no. Some terrible things happened, even in Pharaoh's family. Finally, finally, Pharaoh said yes. And so the people hurried. You remember how they hurried. down to the great water. They had to cross the seas. And as they did, they heard the armies of the Pharaoh coming after them, for he had changed his mind. But you remember that somehow, once again, 
Moses was close to God and knew how to lead the people through the water to freedom. Once they were free, of course, they could do anything they wanted. They could go anywhere they wanted, but they weren't sure what to do. And for many years, Moses led them in the desert, but they complained. It was hot. They were tired. They were discouraged. There wasn't enough to eat. There wasn't enough to drink. But God did not forget the people. In the desert, God gave them manna to eat. And when they were thirsty, God showed Moses how to strike a rock with his staff, his shepherd's staff, for the water to flow, for the people to have water to drink. As they continued in the desert, they got closer and closer. Once again, to Mount Horeb, or another name for it is Mount Sinai. Moses was drawn once again to that fire. But he was the only one who had the courage to climb the mountain, to come close. His brother Aaron stayed with the people. And when Moses came to the mountain, once again he knew what he was to do, for God came close to Moses once again and told him that he should write the 10 best ways to live on tablets of stone so that the people would know what to do now that they were free. When Moses came down from the mountain, being so close to God, bringing those 10 best ways to live on the stone tablets, his face was shining. But he'd been gone a while the people of God weren't sure he was coming back. They didn't know what to do. And so they collected all the gold, the jewelry that people were wearing, and they melted it. And they asked Aaron to make them a golden calf. And he did. They said, that will be our God now. When Moses came down from the mountain, face shining. He saw the people dancing around this golden calf. He was furious. He was so angry, he threw down the tablets and broke them. He said the people didn't deserve those 10 best ways. But in the same way that God had watched over the people and given them manna and water on their journey in the desert, when the people saw that they had done something bad, they were ashamed and they were sorry, and God forgave them and showed Moses how once again to give them the 10 best ways on the tablets so they would know the ways to live. They took some of the gold and covered up a special box called an ark. Not the kind of ark that's a boat. That's a different ark. This ark is a special box covered with gold with angels on top and poles on each side so they could carry it. For they put those tablets in the ark and the people took them wherever they went. And 
Moses showed them how to make a special tent for God called the tabernacle. It was a special place, the Holy of Holies, where they would keep the ten best ways to live wherever they stopped. As they came closer and closer to the promised land, Moses was very full in years. And as they got to the top of Mount Nebo, Moses could look out and he could see Canaan. But once again, God was close to Moses and said, you have done as I've asked, but you have not always done as you should. And you will not see the promised land. Moses died at Mount Nebo, and to this day, no one knows where he is buried. But we always remember all that he did. I wonder, I wonder what part of this big life story you like the best. baby in the bulrushes drawn out by the princess coming close to God not once not twice three times at least I wonder if there's a part of the story where you can see yourself journey in the desert. Sometimes it can feel like that and we get discouraged. We make mistakes. Sometimes we make big mistakes. But we ask God for forgiveness and God forgives us. I wonder if there's a part of this story that really makes you wonder. Or if there's a part of the story that you would like to work with a little more. That's one of the things that we do in this room. After the story, you can take this story to work with to make it really your own. Or, of course, another story that you might want to take down from the shelf. Some people like to work with the story by using art or craft materials. perhaps making an ark. So perhaps at home you might want to read more about it. You might want to paint or draw or write in a journal about this story. But I hope you'll make this story your own as well, for then it's really part of you forever. After the story, and we put everything away, all of our work, all of our story materials. We wash up, of course. And we get ready to come back to the circle to have a time of prayer and a feast that we share. Not the kind of feast like we have at Thanksgiving or perhaps other holidays or celebrations. You know the kind of feast that I mean. We do it every Sunday in this room. We serve one another, for that's what Jesus taught us to do. Jesus said that he was a servant to us and that we should be a servant to one another. And so, as the rest of us gather on the circle, some of us are getting ready to serve, and the rest of us are getting ready to pray. Now, Prayers are just a way that we talk to God, and so they can be out loud, they can be so quiet that only God hears them or not have any words at all. But we like to take turns going around our circle, and we like to use the holding cross for prayer. It fits nicely in our hand. We take turns, each person, and we're very still, 
You know, no one can make you pray. So if you don't have a prayer, that's okay. We are just still so that other people can pray. And when it comes back to the storyteller, then aloud, we all say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. And then it's time to have the feast that we've served one another. We remember when Jesus had a meal with his friends in that upper room long ago. After the meal, Jesus took bread and he blessed it and he broke it. We use the matzah here. It reminds us of the people. That taste of the desert. So we have a matzah taste in this room for our feast. Jesus said to eat it and remember him, which his friends thought was pretty strange at the time since he was right in the room having dinner with them. But then they remembered later what he must have meant. And we remember today when we have this feast. He also took the cup. Maybe it was some wine or some juice. We have water. We know how important water is, the water that is all water, the water of freedom. Jesus blessed that cup and said, drink all of it. It's my promise to you. I will be with you when you gather in my name to the end of the age. So I hope you have a bread or a cracker and a cup and that you remember what you take away from Moses today that's just for you. And until we come together again. Be safe. Be well. May the Lord bless you and keep you.